and uh, we have Federica Zonzini presenting from the University of Bologna. The title of the talk is uh, Tiny Machine Learning Meets Vibration Based Structural Health Monitoring, Solving a Binary Classification Problem at the Edge. And I will ask uh, Federica to take over. Thank you for the kind introduction. And uh, today I will talk about uh, SHM meeting a uh, tiny machine learning. So let's start by defining what the uh, tiny machine learning, what about them, um, what the uh, structural health monitor is defined about. SHM is a training discipline which aims at testing the integrity condition of structures while they are in the normal operation. A typical SHM process starts from the detection of potential damages up to the prediction of the remaining structural life cycle. So uh, the typical workflow starts from the extraction of the features. And in this specific case, we have considered the scenario based on vibration-based analysis, which means that we try to control how the condition of the structure are by looking over time how frequency related quantities may change. So why statistical approaches are typically failing since they are not capable to model all the structural parameters such as the effects of environmental agents, this is exactly the point at which artificial intelligence comes to play and many works have been published in the past. The specific idea we tried to investigate in this case is whether we can further enhance the classification itself in the case of structures by moving from cloud-based data analytics, which is at the state of the art, but it is usually performed in a time and energy consuming manner to smart to a sensor near structural inference, which is empowered to smart sensor node permanently installed into the structure. And particularly the framework in which we would like to I investigate is uh, the one in which uh, suppose that we are capable to monitor a structure over one year or in the next in the most ideal case over a long period of time in which we can monitor it and control all the features in nominal conditions. Once, for example, the big spectral values, which are really important parameters for the structures that have been obtained, we can create a feature space. Then by using these values, we can use the TensorFlow platform, for example, to train our model and exactly validate it. Once we have created our neural network model, we can move, as you may understand and you may know, to a TensorFlow light transformation, which allows us to deploy finally the model itself to an embedded device. This could be, for example, the case of the Arduino Nano 33 VLE Sense platform, which we have used in our case, since it is really similar to low cost and low power devices, which we can implement and we can install in the structure. Our test bed for this specific analysis was the one of the bed 24 bridge in Switzerland, which was a bridge monitored over one year prior to its demolition. It is a public data set which consists of more than 5,000 time series from which we extracted, as I was showing before, the two topmost frequencies of vibration. And we used the 70% of data for training and validation. They were collected over one, more than eight months and uh, these were the exact values we uh, used in the implementation of the ion associative neural network we used for the classification, so to identify whether the structure in a binary form is healthy or not. And uh, then we used the remaining 30% of data just for the testing, and this phase was implemented directly on the Arduino. And as we can observe from the histograms above, while using an, an ANN with 64 neurons in the in first the, the mapping layer, as many neurons in the, the mapping layer and one bottom layer, we were capable to predict the, the condition of the structure with an accuracy which is average higher than 90%. And the interesting point in this case is that even if we are working with the Arduino, the performances are really promising and really competitive with the ones we can obtain from TensorFlow running on desktop. This is the ways obviously for further optimization, but especially it demonstrates that the tiny machine learning would effectively bring a new change, a new drastic shift of paradigm, even in the case of structural inference. So that's at the end of my presentation. And if you have any questions, please ask me. Thank you for this opportunity to present my activity.
Thank you, Federica. Great talk on structural monitoring. I think that there are, there's a question that appeared in the chat. Let me just see very quickly. Um, so uh, the, the, uh, the question is about the specific neural net architecture that was used for the task. And, and is that an MLP? Uh, it is uh, a simple ANN with just uh, three input, uh, three neurons, uh, which correspond to as many inputs, two for the frequencies and one for the environmental uh, effect, in this case for the temperature, one mapping layer with uh, 64 neurons uh, and one bottleneck neuron, and uh, the final 64 neurons with uh, two output layers for the sigmoid function. Okay, thank you, Federica. I want to thank our sponsors that made this event possible. Um, so the premier sponsors, Newton, working on automated TinyML. If you were there a few days ago, they had a keynote explaining what they're doing. Executive sponsors are ARM, um, um, Edge Impulse as well, um, and Qualcomm, um, Sentient, and then our platinum sponsors, we have Infineon and Reality AI. Gold sponsors are Latent AI, SenseML, and our silver sponsors are Emza, Greenwaves, HOTG, Imagimob, Kiso, Seed, and ST. And with that, I thank you very much for staying on till the very last end, um, the last day of the, uh, the last session of the last day. And um, with that, I think we can close the, the forum for uh, this year. Thank you everybody for contributing. Thank you, Andreas, for uh, also moderating this session.